Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildred, and I am your Gaming Monk for the evening. This is Day 7 of the RPG A Day 2019 Challenge. Today's word is familiar. And that's a word I ended up using a bit infrequently when I reviewed Adventure Conqueror King System a few months back. And I think, to that extent, it's a good time to talk about retro clones. I've never been the biggest fan of them, unless they do something interesting. This is the reason why, of all the myriad, myriad AD&D retro clones that are out there, I have only reviewed two. Those being Astonishing Swordsmen and Sorcerers of Hyperborea, 2nd edition, and Adventure Conqueror King System. Both of them do something different, with the former trying to be much more swords and sorcery-esque instead of the hodgepodge that D&D has always been, and I'll have to cover that one of these days, and the latter focused on the endgame concepts that were always hinted at in D&D, but never fully explored. The reason why I focus on those types is because the core concepts that are in AD&D is stuff that I've already done before. I've done it many a time. In fact, one can argue I've done it too many times. And I've seen the rise and fall of that particular style once before. And while I understand why some people would want to stick to it, the I've never really had a respect for Grognars because I don't care for tradition for tradition's sake. If you want to see an ultimate example of where that story ends up going, look at Rifts, or just Palladium as a whole, and how they have not changed their core mechanics, despite the fact that the game has, for, the le for at least 15 years, desperately, desperately needed some kind of a revamp or some kind of a second edition. And the most that it gets is just shuffling deck chairs since 1988. That is what happens when you stick to tradition too much. And as a result, Palladium Games has been treated as a running joke in the RPG community for as long as I've known it. And of course, then the Bill Coffin story was brought to my attention and everything became clear. So when people were demanding that Kevin Simbeta get banned from conventions, I was sitting here going, Seriously? You guys have now figured this shit out? I've known about this for over a decade. But this is also the reason why I've had the mantra, the best D&D experiences are those found outside of D&D. With AD&D styles, you have, in the case of Hyperborea and Axe, you have cases where it's familiar mechanics, but it's presented in a way that managed to create a unique experience. The same thing goes with the Legend system, which, in my opinion, has the best multiclassing of any D20 knockoff. You have Fantasy Craft, which I'll be covering in a few weeks, which is the undisputed king of 3rd edition style customization, and you'll see why once that review drops. The point is, you can do the old stuff all you want, but you've got to put something in there that makes it its own. Osric and... Castles and Crusades never impressed me in this regard, because all it just felt like was just a standard, fair AD&D style. And, as I've said, I've already done that. I've already gotten that experience. We already have a new spin on old when it comes to people adapting 4th edition into unique ways with stuff like 13th Age, Unity, and, even though I wasn't the biggest fan of it, Strike. Which I've already covered in the past. And as much as I use D&D 5th Edition as my punching bag, I would love to see the same kind of treatment be given to 5th Edition's rule set. Somebody blow it up, keep the core, and rebuild it from scratch. I haven't seen it yet, but just because I haven't found it yet doesn't mean it isn't out there or that somebody is already creating it. I'm not personally going to create it because my game design ideas are elsewhere. In a previous musing, I had said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, which is true, but I also added the caveat of, but don't assume it's perfect either. It's very easy to fall into the trap of utilizing the familiar as a crutch. That this way that you're, from, that you're accustomed to is the best and only way to go about it. Which is what ends up starting the edition wars every few years, and they will come in one form or another. I've... It was in that regard that reviewing D&D 5th Edition, even if it was a tricky review to do, was actually the hardest review I've ever done because I wanted so desperately to not fall into the trap of they changed it, now it sucks. 
I wanted to have a strong basis for my criticisms. And most of them I hold to. Some of them I don't hold to as much as I did all those years ago. But all in all, this is why nostalgia is and always will be a sweet poison. It tastes good when you drink it, but it can still rot you from the inside out, even if you don't realize it. <laughs>